What do you get when you mix Uber with a hospital? Royal pains. Oh, ball time. All right, good dish, good dish. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. We have an athlete that's collapsed. What are you gonna do? Check for a pulse. Call for help. Call for help. First thing you do, call for help. All right, call 911. Yes, he pointed the person out. I need those two gym bags right now. If he, I want some ice from those coolers, okay? I'll move it. Does he have a pulse? Ice, ice, bring it in. Okay, I need to ice his crotch, his armpits, and his scalp. All right, thank you. Pits, he can't breathe. All right, we have to break this little scene down. Athlete collapses while playing basketball. He's saying he's not breathing. It sounds like he has no pulse. At that point, you call help, 911, point somebody out. Because if you just yell it, hoping that someone else will call 911, that may not happen. So point to someone, say you, call 911. And then right away, chest compressions, chest compressions, chest compressions. Don't push with your arms. Push with your upper body because then you could use your weight to your advantage and not tire as quickly than just by using your arms. When you're pushing, you wanna do it to the tune of staying alive, staying alive, ah, 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 ah. All right, that was bad singing, but good effort. Chest, 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 chest compression. Sorry. Aren't you off today, Dr. Lawson? I was. Status post-cardiac arrest. Got his pulse back and opened his airway. Did you really use gym bags for immobilization? Yeah, can't wait to tell him some sweaty boxers saved his neck. So the thing with opening up his airway, if the patient is still basically in a coma state, they can't protect their airway. That's why we do the Glasgow Coma Scale to see whether or not the person can protect their airway. And if they can't, they should be intubated because what can happen is some secretions, whether it's saliva, mucus, vomit, can get into the mouth and then get aspirated into the airway, which will go into the lungs, and that will create a pneumonitis, which is a very serious condition, which causes serious inflammation of the lungs and can be deadly. O2 sat 80, BP 100 over 60. Drop five of Versa and 150 of sucks. Dr. Lawson, paramedics bringing in a 68-year-old with a STEMI. When? Now. 68-year-old with a STEMI means an ST elevation MI. An ST elevation is something that we look for on an EKG when someone's having a heart attack. An MI means myocardial infarction, just another name for a heart attack. And into the femoral artery. And there's the blockage. You can finish up. I'm gonna go out. Got it He's stable, he just needs an angio. Dr. Wolf, how's the kid? The EKG shows a third degree AB block. He's unresponsive to meds. I placed an external pacer, but I'm not getting captured. What's his BP? Hovering around 60 systolic. All right, he needs a wire stat. Is Hank a cardiologist? I'm so confused. Um, what I'm interested in here is this young athlete, he said he has an AV block, which is a problem with the electricity within the heart that can cause the heart to stop beating. He's saying that they're trying to create capture, which is when they put a device on the outside of the chest that tries to capture the heart's beat and reset it and give it the proper rhythm. Now, they're not having success with that, so he says, I'm gonna put in a wire. Essentially, what he's saying is, he's gonna go from the internal structures and control the electricity of the heart that way. Now, we do this all the time for pacemakers and defibrillators, basically for all sorts of congestive heart failure and electrical anomalies of the heart. Priority is Mr. Gardner. You'll see him all the way through. Gardner is stable. His BP is up, his SAT is 98% on two liters, the ST segments are normalizing and his pain is gone. So, how about today we save two for the price of one? Let's go. I mean, I totally agree with him here. Why, what does she want him to do? Babysit the other VIP patient? What good is that gonna do them? If he did the procedure, he opened up his arteries, his ST segments are normalizing, which means that the EKG is improving. What else is he gonna do? Wow. Still can't stop with the romance in these medical shows. With the making out and the, just medicine is fun. We don't need the, just saying. Let's go give that long day of yours a happy ending. It's a dirty show. I recognize Mr. Gardner's level of blockage. I knew it had to be relieved and I was confident he would be successfully angioplastied and survive, barring any bad luck. Well, bad luck rained and poured, didn't it? while you had our senior CT surgeon in another room. To help me try to rescue a crashing patient. I made a judgment call. You made a mistake, a fatal one. And it's a shame, Dr. Lawson, 
because we all know you're the most talented physician this emergency department has seen. And your star was only on the rise. Was? I know for the average person that may watch this and think, oh, that makes sense, he got fired. To me, it makes no sense at all. I have no idea what he did wrong. It looked like he completed most of the procedure and then left the rest of it for another doctor and then went to perform another procedure. He didn't go home to hang out. So I'm still flabbergasted as to why he got fired, but whatever. It's clearly not important for the show's uh, storyline. You really need to get out of this apartment and get some fresh air, bro. In Brooklyn? Honestly, it smells so bad. It smells like a moose had sex with a bucket of Chinese food in here, like musty. And you kind of look like Jesus and Patrick Dempsey had a child and that child grew older and then got really sick. That's weird. Look, 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 this trip is gonna get you back on your feet. I promise. Trip? What trip? Are you kidding? To the Hamptons. I've been telling you about this all month. Yeah, and all month I've been saying, no way. A lot of medicine up front, a lot of no medicine in the middle. Clear, clear. <laughs> Dr. Silver here. When are your damn kids gonna learn how to hold your drugs? Well, this is concierge doctor. Start with some oxy and a little crystal. Rip a few lines and chase it all down with champagne. Heaven salad, your kids call it, right? What? April doesn't do drugs. Why? Because she says she doesn't? Newsflash, pretty boy. Most drug addicts are also liars. Sorry, April, we gotta get this straight into your system. Doctor, you may have misdiagnosed. Oh, really? Who are you? Just a concerned observer. Oh. Well, I observe nausea, photosensitivity, <laughs> Disorientation, fewer of the telltale symptoms of an opioid overdose. What do you observe? The same symptoms that you are, plus a couple you're not. Like her meiotic pupils and sludge toxidrome. I don't understand. He didn't even look at her eyes. How does he know what her pupils look like? I mean, it sounds like he has x-ray vision and he could see from across the room, especially in a dark room. How is he able to see it? Not buying it, Hank. All right, look out. Look out. I got this from here, guy. Who are you? I'm a lifeguard. <laughs> Are you board certified in clinical toxicology? Huh? Help me get her up, Baywatch. I somehow doubt that this guy's an interventional cardiologist, clinical toxicologist. How many board certifications does he have? And they're not even ones that go hand in hand. Like if you're an ER doctor and you're a toxicologist, I get it. But being an interventional cardiologist and a toxicologist, eh. Those are nice Ferraris. 360 Modena? This isn't my blood, it's my girlfriend's. Um, can you come inside? Yeah. Yeah, sure. No malpractice insurance, no anything. Just, oh yeah, I'm just gonna be casually your doctor. Uh-oh, uh-oh, fainting? Is he gonna vomit? Tucker? He's sweating. Oh. Is that the seatbelt mark on his chest? Could have a cardiac contusion, which is a bruise of the heart. Why didn't you tell me your hemophiliac? Oh. My chest is killing me. Where's your factor eight supply? Uh, bottom drawer next to my aquarium. So he has a bleeding disorder that if you get into a car accident or any kind of accident for that matter, you start bleeding excessively and you're missing one of the clotting factors, specifically factor eight. That's what he's talking about here. I don't know how he knows it's specifically factor eight. That's really impressive. And also how he knows exactly that he's a hemophiliac. It's very impressive diagnostic skills that I feel are a little bit past human abilities. Stay with me, pal. pal. Stay, with me. Tucker, stay with me. Tucker, stay with me. Tucker, stay with me. Tucker. Jugulars up, muffled heart sounds, minimal pulses. Damn, it's a Bex. What's happening to him? Bex? Know, what Bex do you mean, Bex? Bex? Probably contused his heart and bled into the pericardial cell. What are you talking about? Look at that. His heart is being squeezed and not circulating blood to his brain. He needs the fluid drain, but because of his hemophilia, I could kill him trying to save him. This is actually really similar to what happened uh, with the Good Doctors pilot episode where the patient got into also an accident and blood was pooling around the heart and we were worried about cardiac tamponade where the heart's trying to beat, but it's there's a buildup of fluid in the sac surrounding the heart, so it has no room to beat properly and therefore all the vital organs are not getting enough blood supply. What complicates this case even further, and I have no idea again how he knows he's a hemophiliac, is that he's a hemophiliac. So if he's to do any kind of procedure, like insert a needle into the pericardial sac and take the fluid away so that the heart can beat properly, he can kill him because he could bleed out. <laughs> oh my God, this okay. is so fake, it's crazy. It's cloudy. You need the pen? 
Okay. Tate, he's doing great. He's clotting. Okay. Good, good. It's okay. Ow, ow. Tucker. Just take it easy, pal. Just take it easy. Take it easy. I just cut open into your heart and your ribs. You're all good, though. Just take it easy. He saved you. He, he saved what? you. That's what he did. Libby helped out big time. Libby helped out. Libby. My man, I'm call 911. This show is really funny. I actually enjoyed watching it as a regular show, not just as a medical drama. There's obviously some crazy, unrealistic situations that go on. But the one part that is true is VIP concierge doctors are all the rage. What my goal was when I was in medical school was to become a VIP concierge doctor, but for everybody, make it as a low cost option. And that's sort of coming into existence with something known as direct primary care. And I'm kind of excited about it. Click here for my three favorite videos from the last few months. As always, stay happy and healthy.